Back in this country, the Green New Deal, almost overnight it seems like, has taken over the environmental agenda of the Democratic Party. Young pioneer Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, we're going to need to ground our planes, ditch our cars, stop having kids for the sake of the planet. We even need to stop eating hamburgers, though Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff was just caught downing one for dinner the other night. But even if we went entirely to wind and solar, as the Green New Deal ordains, would that fix the problems we need to fix? Michael Schellenberger has spent many years looking at this, and he doesn't think so. He's the president of the group Environmental Progress, and he joins us tonight. Michael, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks you, for having me. You wrote a piece in Quillette this morning that I thought was really smart and interesting, and I recommend it to everyone watching because of the level of scientific detail in it. But it's about wind and solar and the claim that we could shift the grid to rely on renewables like wind and solar overnight and be okay. And you say that's not possible. Yeah, we, you know, and I was one of the founders of sort of the original Green New Deal back in 2000, between 2003, 2007. People don't remember uh, President Obama, we spent about $150 billion on renewables between 2009 and 2015. And we just in kept encountering the same kind of problems everywhere that were related both to the, the essential unreliability of solar and wind. They just depend on when the sun is shining and wind is blowing, which is 10 to 40 percent of the year. And then also something that people are not as aware of, which is the low energy density of sunlight and wind. And basically yes. what we've been finding is that the, more, the lower the energy density of the fuel, in this case the sunlight and wind, the bigger the environmental impact, you just have to use a lot more natural resource, including land, to generate very much electricity. So it's not very good for the environment, was your point. Then you point to another form of energy that has a checkered reputation, but that you made a very powerful case for, nuclear. Yeah, I mean, we were in the, in the process of, of trying to figure out how to deal with things like climate change, or even if you're not as concerned about climate change, how to deal with air pollution. Yes. We finally just had a number of friends who said, what about nuclear? And we were like, well, but nuclear is scary. And we had, you know, I had all of the concerns that most people have about nuclear. I went up, read up about all the accidents um, and was shocked, actually, by how few people uh, died in Chernobyl. Um, in the most recent accident, Fukushima, uh, the scientists agree that nobody will die from the radiation that escaped. And that, too, is explained by the energy density. So what we find is that biomass, burning wood, and fossil fuels kill about 7 million people a year from smoke. Um, and so that smoke is just a function of all of that waste product being in the air, people breathing right. it. With nuclear, even in the worst accident, only a tiny amount of material escapes. And so the energy density of the fuel also determines just how much air pollution there's going to be. So the people who wrote the Green New Deal and proposals like it must have consulted scientists before they did. And so they must know what you just said is true because it, it demonstrably is true. So why isn't, so. <laughs> why isn't nuclear part of the solution? Why are they against nuclear? It's very disappointing. Um, well, I mean, there's sort of three big reasons why people are against nuclear. I mean, the first is that they associate it with the bomb, which right. is wrong. They're two separate technologies. Um, you know, the second is that in the 60s, more in the 60s, but still around today, there was concerns that too much cheap energy, too much nuclear energy, would result in overpopulation, overconsumption. And then the third one, which in some ways is the most powerful, is just a really strong desire to right. use energy to harmonize with the natural world. That turns out to be a bad idea because the more the more natural resource we use, the worse it is for the natural environment. Well, exactly. You know, we... Exa and I would just, we're, unfortunately, at a time, I would recommend your piece on Quillette to everybody watching because it really changed my mind completely on the subject. Mike Schellenberger, thank you very thank much. You. Thanks for having me.